and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back with you guys for another episode of our Behind Enemy Lines series, a show in which we are joined by a member of the opposition to learn all about who Arsenal will be facing this week. And I'm very happy to be joined by James from the Watford Way. How are you doing, mate? Are you well? Yeah, absolutely fine. Really excited for the game uh, on Sunday. Of course, the Troy Beanie Derby uh, is back, <laughs> which which is very very exciting. But yeah, in all seriousness, really looking forward to the game, and yeah, hopefully Watford can can pick up a win. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing if Arsenal have got any cojones uh, once again to, to try and get a result. I mean, I remember I was at the Emirates for the game in which Petr Cech finally saved the penalty and it was even more <laughs> glorious than it was Troy Deeney that he, yeah. of course, got that save against. But things obviously changed a lot since then. I mean, things at Watford changed quite a lot in the space of 12 months, especially managerially. So talk to me kind of this season about how that the season's gone, your expectations of what they were and if they've kind of been exceeded or you, they've not met them and, and how generally the season's gone? Well, I think the season for, you know, ge generally is, has gone pretty much how, how I saw, saw it panning out, really. Obviously, what the newly promoted side, um, you don't really know what to expect. And to be honest, my aim is for, for the start of the season was just to finish um, 17th or above. And obviously, you know, if we exceed that, then then brilliant. We've done really well. And obviously, if we get relegated, then obviously that's that's something we have to reassess come the end of the season. So I think where we are now, you know, 16th, 15th in the table, I think that's really, you know, wh where we should be currently. Um, we've played a couple of, you know, bigger teams. we played Tottenham away, which we was unlucky to get a result from. Um, obviously, you mentioned the managerial change which obviously you know fr from the outside looking in you might think is is ludicrous but I think if you speak to a lot of Watford fans um you know if, if you spoke to the owner that is is how the club operates um you know they make these decisions for for the for the, for the better of the club they're, they're not just doing it um out of spite so you know where we are currently in the league the the performances we've had it's been a bit up and down up and down um so yeah I, I'm pretty content at the moment obviously um, a win against you lot would help because the, the fixtures we've got coming up are, are, are pretty crazy. We've got Arsenal, we've got United, Chelsea, City, uh, Leicester, you know, all in a row. So there's really... Um, well, United's easy at the moment. So you got yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's not a lot of respite for us. So hopefully um, we can ease some of that pressure by, by getting a positive result on, on Sunday. It's going to be interesting where kind of the tactical battles are drawn and we're going to go on to some of the specifics in a minute. But... The, the tactical kind of element of your game has trained, just changed drastically recently with the, the appointment of, of Claudio Ranieri. Do you think that they were right, again, to make quite a swift decision with the management change? And do you think they've made the right choice with, with who they brought in? I think um, whenever a club makes a managerial change, there's obviously something that has gone wrong. And, you know, you, you see um, you see Spurs sack Nuno after 17 games, which is actually less games than, than Zisco had at Watford. And I don't see a lot of people, um, you know, having a go at Daniel Levy or having a go at Spurs for, for sacking him after such a short period of time. Whereas, whereas it comes to Watford, obviously, we've, we've done it, you know, so many times in the past. And, you know, Zisco, he, 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 you know, in terms of Watford managers um, and how long they've, they've been given, he, he was given quite a long time in relation to, to some of the other managers. So... I think with Zisco in the championship, he, he was carried by the quality of the team at times where, um, you know, where his tactics may have been poor, the likes of Ismail Assar, uh, Trudini, Will Hughes, they, they did carry him at times. And then we've obviously got promoted back to the Premier League where we're coming up against, you know, Mikel Arteta, Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp. Um, you know, all these top managers. And I just think that at that point in Zisco's career, um, I think it was maybe too much too soon. And obviously we brought in Ranieri, who is completely the opposite to Zisco. You know, the most mm. experienced manager um, in the Premier League now, 72 years old. Um, and Zisco was, was only, look, 40. And, you know, we're, we're his, essentially his second club in his, in his managerial career. So we've gone basically for, for polar opposites in terms of managers. You know, in terms of play style and, and the formations uh zisco uh used to go for four three three and ranieri mm. has um adopted that at times although don't be surprised to, to see the four four two potentially on sunday um because he, he he has also changed that during during the games i've seen so it's very very interesting um but yeah what i would say is ranieri obviously is very very experienced and of course he, he did win a premier league with, with leicester city so if he can replicate any of that success at watford um, I'll be very, very happy. What have you made of kind of the inconsistency of, of performance? Because you go and get a, a massive win against Everton and, and then you've got this huge game against Southampton, which just kind of lulled you back into that sense of, oh, this is this the level we're looking for? Is this 
are we actually capable of kind of keeping those explosive performances that we saw against Everton up throughout the season? How do, does that put you into a really awkward and kind of unpredictable place of guessing what might happen this weekend? I think it's just really your your classic promoted side, isn't it? You know, I, I, mm. I expect... Um, you know, we, we beat Norwich. I, I expected us to beat Norwich because they come up with us. They, they also have a full squad. Um, but I think it's, it's it's a difficult one to answer, really. Obviously, the Everton result was was fantastic, um, especially the last 15 minutes. You know, I think we scored four goals in 15 minutes. So it was, you know, it's absolutely fantastic to watch. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a great away day. But it's just, I, I can't really pin it down to anything in particular. Um you know, Southampton did look really good. You, you know, the one thing I could probably pin, you know, the, the alternating results down to is, is probably defensively. And a lot of the goals we have conceded this season have come from individual mistakes. We've, we've currently got, you know, a massive injury crisis in that area. Craig Cathcart mm. and, and William Schuster Kong are, are really currently our, our only fit centre-back. So we do have an issue um, in that area. We did bring in Nicholas Inculu, um from Italy in on a free transfer, but he's not ready yet. Uh, he's not fit enough yet to, to play a part in the squad. So, yeah, we are lacking yeah. in that area and it's definitely something you, you can target on Sunday because Craig Cathcart, um definitely is, is not Premier League level. So, so definitely target him if, if you're looking to get something from the game. I think for Arsenal fans, the biggest kind of threat that they look at with the wet for Watford side, as do I think pretty much all the, the, the teams this season, is Ismail Assar. He was, has been linked with, with a number of moves. Liverpool in particular have been interested in him. He's stayed. He's, he's come back to the Premier League. He's had some influential performances. He's going to be up against either one of Nuno Tavares or Kieran Tierney. We're not sure yet who that will be because Tierney is, is coming back fit and, and could return for this game. How threatening is he and how big of a kind of an important figure is he in that Watford side? Oh, I think it's my Sarr. I mean, clearly he, he is our best player. I think you'll find with a lot of promoted sides, actually, they they always seem to have that one player. You know, Brentford have I have Ivan Tony. Um, yeah. Norwich used to have Emi Buendia. Emi Buendia. And we've got Ismail Asar and, you know, he, he is absolutely superb. I'd expect him to leave. Um, next summer, you know, maybe for uh, for Manchester United, uh, Liverpool. I know his friends with Saudi Mane. Um, he is absolutely fantastic down that right flank. Um, my one criticism, and and we saw it against Southampton, is his attitude sometimes can, can be a problem. He, he does get quite frustrated at times if if the game's not going his way. Um, and also, if, if you do kind of shut down that that right that right flank for Watford and and you stop his Milosar from from playing at his best, um, we, we do struggle to to create from from other areas of the pitch. So. It is um, it's going to be a tough test for, for obviously Tini or, or Tavares, whoever plays. He is really, really quick as well. Like when, when you watch him live in the stadium, mm. it's absolutely um, it's, it's absolutely rapid. Like he's up there with, with like Adama Traore in terms of pace. Yeah. He's, he's rapid. So, you know, you are going to be in for a, for a tough test for Mark and Saar. However, um, Southampton man marked him really, really well. He didn't really, um, you know, didn't really get a grasp of, of that game at all. And then ultimately we went on to lose that. So as long as if, if you mark him out the game and, and he becomes frustrated, you'll have a better day defensively. Um, if, you know, like Norwich, you can't handle him, you know, you score two goals, he, he caused their defence, you know, loads and loads of problems. So you are in for a tough test, but if, if you do mark him well, um, you, you will find some success. Interestingly, you said kind of at the start that you're hopeful of getting a result and a victory. You, you should have got one against Spurs earlier in the, in the campaign. How do you see the game going from your perspective? I know we, we talked about some of the unpredictabilities, the qualities that Watford have. And obviously, I'm sure you've seen a little bit of Arsenal this season through Premier League and highlights and stuff like that. So how do you see the game playing out? And where do you think Arsenal in particular are going to find those weaknesses? You've mentioned the defence, I know, already. But where, where do you see the game kind of being played and, and won and lost? Well, I think I think with Watford this season. I mean, last season in the Championship, you know, I think we had we had the best home record in the division, and, and we've come up and, and we've kind of played our best football um, away from home. So, so in that sense, I'm I'm quite optimistic. Um, you know, as I said, Tottenham away, we should have really picked up a result there. We we won away at Norwich, um, obviously won away at Everton, scoring five goals. So I think away from home, we are playing our our best football this season. 
you know, in terms of where our weaknesses are, as I mentioned, you know, defensively, we are light in that area. Um, obviously, we do have four, uh, two former Tottenham players as well in Danny Rose, um, who should be back fit for this game. He's not played the, the last couple of weeks, but it should be back fit. And obviously, we've got Musa Sissoko mm. as well. So I think that would be... What have you made of him? To... Has he been good? Have you, has he surprised oh, you at all? Or? Oh, Sissoko has honestly been... Uh, he's been up there with one of our best players. I know the Tottenham fans, you know, at, at the very beginning didn't really... Um, you know, make make that connection with him. But at mm. Watford, he's, he's wearing the captain's armband after after Troidini's left, um, and he's just he's top class. He's not the quickest of players, but he's powerful, mm. uh, good passing, and he's kind of acted in that kind of like box to box um, midfielder role for us. Obviously, um, we, we play the midfield three at the moment, or, or the two, depending on on what what mm. Ranieri goes with. But, but yeah, he's he's been top class. So I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say Suzuko is our weakness. Um, you know, Josh King's been firing as well. You've got to watch out for him. He, he scored the hat trick uh, against Everton. But as I said, defensively, um, Craig Cathcart and William Schuster Kong um, look shaky in goal as well. I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's a lot of debate at the moment between uh, Ben Foster or mm -hmm. Daniel Backman. Ben Foster's had a couple of off field issues, which, which is quite surprising, maybe, maybe to the outsider. Um, mm. so there's been a lot of calls for, for Daniel Batman. What, what, kind of you know, I haven't heard them in particular. So what is the reported? Yeah, noise? so basically, it, it, I'll keep the story short, but it all stems from the Liverpool game. And obviously, you're, you're aware of his YouTube channel. And he essentially, um, I mean, it's, it's probably not ma that much of a big deal, but, but at the time, it, it <laughs> did seem like it. So he basically invited this, this Liverpool fan, this UFC fighter, into, mm. into the Watford end. This this UFC fighter Paddy ended up getting kicked out of the ground, he, and then he he was swearing about <laughs> Ben Foster, swearing about the club, and you know the the meltdown on on Twitter afterwards was 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 yeah it's it quite crazy. So there's been a lot of criticism, you know, for his on field performances and what's happened off field. Um, so yeah, I think Ben Foster, you know, especially uh, you know in the box and, and coming out to cross is, is not that great. So if you're going to mm. maybe get Tierney and, and you know, Tim, Tommy Asu up the pitch, you know, overlapping, getting crosses into the box, um, I think that that's something you, you could target as well. Interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, Backman was was impressive at times when I saw him play. So it's it's almost as if, like, the YouTube um, influence and, and that sort of things has, has pushed him, like, come on, come on, Gaffer, let me in. I want to record this. I need content. Yeah, no, no, um, no literally, it's, it's, it's like that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'm not surprised that it is, to be fair, with the amount of influence and, and you know, the politics that are going in behind the scenes now these days. So I'm going to push you, James, for a, for a prediction for the game. So uh, hit me with what you think is going to happen. So I'm usually a bit crazy with my predictions. So I'll, I'll give you a realistic prediction and then I'll <laughs> give you um, a James prediction. So sure. my realistic prediction, uh, you know, I, I, you should be beating us. Obviously, we're we're a newly promoted side. You've, you've got fantastic players, um, so you should really be beating us. So you know, realistically, um, you know, if, if we get a draw, maybe maybe one one, or even even a narrow defeat, as long as we give our all, I'll probably take that. Um, realistically, um, I'd love to score loads and loads of goals. So you know, my James prediction would be four nil. Um, realistically, <laughs> realistically, I'll go maybe one-one. So yeah, that's my prediction. You sit me there laughing. If we lose four 0 I'm getting clipped up like crazy on the <laughs> socials. So uh, <laughs> fingers crossed for my sake. Now that doesn't happen. But yeah, from my perspective, look, Watford are a side that you have to respect. I think that they've shown that this season uh, with the result at Everton, it picked up three wins. I mean, if you look at the other teams down there, if you're picking up wins in the league, you've got a great chance of staying up. It sounds ridiculously simple to say, but you look at how new. Castle are playing, you look at how Norwich are playing. If you can pick up your odd wins here and there, especially in games that I mean, you've sh you've seen this season, small sides pick up wins away from home. Palace are doing it really, really well this season with the Spurs game, the Man City game, despite not necessarily being able to pick up wins in games you you expect them to. So the fact that Watford have been able to pick up these these few wins here could be enough to see them stay up. Which you know, considering the other teams down there, I'd, I'd quite like to see Watford stay up this season and push on and and finally kind of build upon some of the business that they've done in recent seasons too. So I I'm going to be I'm going to be honest and say I think Arsenal will win this relatively comfortably and I'll go with a 2-0 win but 
you know, we'll, we'll say a Tom prediction of 5 0, just as you went out there for a 4 0 in our way. So we'll go for a, a Tom prediction of 5 0, um, but a realistic one of, of a couple of goals going Arsenal's way. Thank you, James, for coming on. Really appreciate your time, mate. Do tell people no where they problem. can find you. Uh, so you can find us, um, of course, on YouTube at The Watford Way. We're also on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. And we also upload all our match uh, previews and reactions to Spotify as well. So you can find us across all socials at The Watford Way. Brilliant stuff. Thank you so much, James, for coming on. Please do check Thank out you. James's channel and uh, and see his reaction. If his James prediction comes right, you probably won't want to. But maybe if the Tom one does, you'll be able to check out his uh, his reaction there. So please, please do. You can find us, of course, always on the channel Monday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. for our Arsenal Agenda show. You'll be able to catch up on Mikel Arteta's press conferences throughout the season as well on the channel, as well as lots more fun and interesting content as well. We're nearly on our way for 4,000 subs, so please do hit that subscription button if you haven't done so already but we'll see you again very very soon and keep following us down the arsenal way